It's Rogers TV. Interest payments were going up. Creditors were calling. I finally realized I needed help. The people at Jane's and Knowles really, really took care of me. And I'm glad I chose a local solution. I felt like they understood me better. Getting help with my debt has given me the energy, the headspace, and the time to make my dreams come true. A chance to start again with knowledge, support, and people in your corner. Are you looking for that kind of help? It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosworthy.ca. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, my life changed forever. Life has changed for all of us during the pandemic, and many people are turning to alcohol and drugs to cope. Even though most of us are staying home more, police across Ontario are seeing an alarming increase in impaired driving and the horrible devastation that goes with it. Now, more than ever, we need your commitment to never drive impaired and to encourage all of your family and friends to do the same. Together, we can save lives. Granville is a place with a tortured history dating back to the 1940s when a mass murderer known as the Willow Woods Wolf Man went on a vicious killing spree only to be captured on Halloween night 1944. But on October 31st, 1959, he escaped and brought Frank and June Marsters to their grisly end. At least that's the official story, but now there's a group of horror-loving kids breaking into the abandoned Marster's house to get to the bottom of what really happened that Halloween. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Game TV's turning 15, and we're celebrating by giving away money. Lots of money. Watch Game TV weeknight today to spot the special code and enter at GameTVContests.com, where you'll have a chance to win cash prizes totaling over $80,000. Yes, $80,000. Don't just watch the winners, be a winner. Game TV's Watch and Win Anniversary Contest, September 12th to December 16th. Visit GameTVContests.com for more info. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Hello, spooky friends. That Halloween is an award-winning horror film by local filmmaker Mike Hickey. And also now, author Mike Hickey has released the same story or an adaptation of, also called That Halloween, which is available now at Engine Books. Look them up on your socials. Now, speaking of which, if you remember a couple of seasons ago, Mike had another book that he helped assemble called Terror Nova. And we took a creepy bus tour to a couple of creepy places to have a look at that story and what it entails. Enjoy. Okay, folks, you are no stranger to Mr. Mike Hickey. Uh, you've been around for the last uh, two or three or four it's, Halloween specials. As long as you've been doing Halloween specials, I've as, been around for those. As long yeah. as I've been with uh, Rogers TV and Edward Fogg. Um, so in addition to being our resident um, creepy guy. And when you say it that way, it's sort of, it hurts a little bit. No, it doesn't. You love it. Uh, and a uh, horror expert, especially in literature and film. Yeah. You're also right now, um, uh, well, editor and co-author of Terror Nova. So, yeah. So what's Terror Nova? So Terror Nova is uh, a new anthology of Newfoundland-inspired horror. We have uh, 11 authors uh, who have lived in Newfoundland, experienced Newfoundland, know what Newfoundland culture is, know what the Newfoundland landscape is, know what Newfoundland towns are like, who have put together some incredible hor like original horror stories inspired by the place. Um, and I wrote a novella that kind of wraps around all those stories. So there's, there's how, many, how many stories are there? Not so there's yours. 11, 11 plus mine. Okay, so there's 11 ghost stories or horror stories. Horror stories, and yeah. And then you managed to find a way to write one that wraps them all into one story. Well, yeah, I have a story that I wrote at the end as well as a novella that kind of weaves through everything. And so the idea is uh, a few years ago, uh, me and my now wife were in Dublin, and we did this thing called the Ghost Bus Tour. 
which sounds okay. like Ghostbuster, but it it's does. Ghost Bus Tour, <laughs> and it's this double-decker bus yeah. where you get on, and the bottom floor is done up like a haunted house, and there's animatronic things that like jump out at you, and there's a fog machine and this lightning is, and all this, this kind spooky. of stuff. This is spooky. And then you go upstairs, and then the guy comes, and it's like done up like a little parlor, and you sit down, and they drive you around Dublin, and a guy comes up and tells you ghost stories. It's kind of like the haunted hike, but on a bus. Yes. Okay. And so when we were trying to come up with an idea for what the framing device and narrative for this book would be. I thought back to that and went, okay, That's how cool, cool would it idea. be to get on a bus and go around Newfoundland and go to all these different places and hear stories kind of inspired by them. So you roll into Trinity and there's a story about Trinity. You yeah. roll into, um, you know, Carboneer and there's a story about Peter Easton and, you know, like these sorts of things. Okay, so that's a really cool concept. And yeah, it's really fun. I, for, I think I forgot to do a Yelp review, so I feel like this makes up for that. The, like, I, I forgot to do a review for the for the bus tour, but I wrote a book about it. Right. Okay, so um, that's enough talking about it. Um, I guess so, yeah, yeah. Let's just go sort of make it happen? Yeah, so we have a bus. Yeah, we're going to get on And we decorated the bus, and we have a bunch of authors and friends, and we're going to go drive around and do some spooky stuff. Because why us. not? Come with it's gonna us. It's going to be fun. As moonlight crowns thy pine-clad hills, there is a darkness that spreads its hand into the nooks and crannies of the rocky landscape and lingers under the gleeful facade of Newfoundland and Labrador. It's not on billboards, it's not in magazines or featured in cooking shows. When ginger-haired children run through tourism commercials alongside a clothesline strewn with floral printed sheets from Nan's spare room, the sheets don't catch the shape of a body that isn't actually standing in the sun-drenched field of high grass. But that darkness is there, waiting to envelop the place like a fog smothering a harbor. It's the same darkness that stretched out to form the long shadow of the double-decker bus that shambled over the winding road, making its way to pick up a herd of tourists. According to the brochures, guests were promised a night of pure horror from sunset to sunup. But the bus would have to race the day's end if it planned to stay true to its advertised word and collect the gaggle of tourists that were convening outside a pub in downtown St. John's before nightfall. The bus was a strange sight, even if you forgave the fact that double-decker buses weren't used on the island, and as far as anyone could tell, this was the only one. It was painted in a rich purple with black accents along the corners, edges, and rivets. A neon green Terra Nova was sprawled along the side in a font that had carefully been selected from an online list tagged hashtag horror. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Matthew LeDrew. Matt, you're the owner of Engine Books. I am. And yeah. I understand Engine Books as being a local, uh, is publisher the right word? Yeah, publisher yeah. absolutely the right word. And you're sort of specialized in things like horror, or like indie is what you say, correct? Indie, yeah, so uh, horror, science fiction, fantasy, genre publishing broadly. Yeah. Okay, so can we talk a little bit about where Terror Nova came from? First of all, how good a name is Terror Nova? That's all, Mike. Oh, That's, it's so clever. It's so clever. Can't yeah. believe it wasn't done before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's how, in my mind, that's how you know something's a really good idea when instantly everybody says, how does this not already exist? Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah. tell me about how it came about because it's an interesting concept. It was. So the concept was, I would be hard pressed to say which one of them. I've just been given Mike total credit for it. But uh, he came to me after the nightmare on Water Street, or nightmare on George Street events yeah. that Juan was putting off, and we'd met at a local horror convention and stuff like that. He decided he wanted to work with me on a novel or a book of short stories, and I think together we just workshopped the idea. One of us came up with the idea of curating local authors, because I've had been blessed to work in the industry with a lot of very, very talented, scary writers and to have each one write a different stop along the way. So he wrote this, I think it was me that came up with the idea of the framing narrative. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, as we call it. And then every stop along the way was a different short story. Because I think the original concept was just a book of short stories. So it's really interesting to be able to take all of these individual voices as authors. Because yeah. a lot of times in an anthology, it's very clear where one story starts and ends. and where. But this isn't a collection of short stories. It's one narrative that ties separate voices together. Very so much. So it's sort of, um, I feel like that's not a super common thing to happen. It's it's not entirely common, uh, especially in this genre or anything like that. It is a, a, a unique thing, and I'm, I'm gifted with knowing some very talented authors who could pull it off, and like when you give them like voice and tone and stuff yes. like that, they yeah. know what to do. And of course, they have the freedom because of the concept to write the way that they would write because they're not bound by Moik's voice as writing the novella that ties them together. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, Matt, thank you so much for your part in that and for coming out tonight. Thank you. And uh, let's go do some creepy stuff. Awesome.
Okay, so we're about to walk into down into the corn maze here at Lester's. This is John Dobbin, one of the co-contributors, one of the authors. Um, one thing I want to point out before we talk about anything about your story is clearly this is meant to be your genre because I saw this. Yeah. This yeah. would be the one and only super creepy Edgar Allan Poe. Is and this almost looks like a raven. It is. Yeah. yeah there's and it's that's, faded a little. There's a house. I see the skull. Is that like Oscar. the cask of a Montalato, maybe? Yeah. Or the mask of the Red Death. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And then I have my Stephen King tattoos. So like horror, thriller, that sort of literature is well. I mean, kind of actually in your blood. Yeah. For yeah, real. A little bit. Yeah. On the okay. surface, anyway. Sure. Uh, tell me a little bit how you got involved in this project. Uh, well, I work, uh, I've done a few different stories with NGen and the crew before. Uh, I actually debuted as a published author in their former anthology, Chillers from the Rock. Oh, I heard about that, yeah. Uh, so I had a couple of scary stories in me there, and my uh, debut novel, The Starving, came out May 2019, and that's a horror western novel. Horror so, western? Yeah, yeah. I like it. So I've been uh, I've been involved in the horror writing stuff for a while. So uh, Matt and Mike reached out and asked me if I wanted to take part, and I of course wanted to jump on it. So Sounded can like you give thing. me uh, as we start to tread through here? Watch your step. Can you give me a little bit of information about your story? A li just just a, maybe a little teaser for the audience. Uh, my story takes place on an oil a made up oil rig off the coast of Newfoundland. Uh, I didn't want to do anything too real um because everybody you know knows the oil company pretty well around here but sure yeah um it's basically kind of a, a head nod to uh lovecraft and his type of work okay um but taking place on a newfoundland oil rig cool yeah so are we talking like murderous gory stuff ghosts and goblins like where are we well minus the racism that he's known for um <laughs> but but add in um, a lot of supernatural kind of ominous old god creatures that are, you know, that we can't comprehend kind of thing and a cult that wants to bring them back. So some of the creepy figures who might show up in the middle of a corn maze in the middle of the night? Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Thanks, John. That's exactly what I needed, bro. That's great, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Mike, let's talk a little bit about the horror culture. Yeah. Uh, in and around St. John's in Newfoundland, because you're you're a big part of a couple of different things. So talk a little bit about what's going on in our in, like the creepy stuff here. So much is happening here. It's really cool. I mean, obviously, like it took us. It was so easy when me and Matt started this project to bring together eleven authors who wanted to write Newfoundland horror. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like that alone, I think, says a whole lot about just how strong things are here in terms of horror. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I've, I've been doing some stuff with the Grind Mind guys. I just worked on uh, their latest uh, film a couple months ago, getting ready to do Mummering Legends with them, which I'm really excited about. Mummering Legends? What's yeah, this? it's a new one they're doing for uh, the Picture Sharp program. Okay. Um, so it's kind of a, I guess a sort of prequel. Oh, that's creepy, like the bride. Yes, it is, yeah. The bride and groom Actually, over there. Actually, just uh, come off us for a second and go just look at this creepy bride and groom. Out. Look at that. That's, that's frightening. I would not marry her. Um, right? Ugh. But yeah, you know, there's, there's like- you know, Maybe in the middle of the day with your kids, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably nice and cute and stuff <laughs> in broad daylight. But yeah. again, uh, a, a corn maze in the middle of the night when no one's around is- Totally different thing. Uh, it's a different thing. Um, I've seen this in movies, I've never done it. <laughs> I don't, I don't this, know. This way? I guess. I didn't know this was this deep. What way? This I'm way. I'm totally turned Let's go this now. way. I really am turned. Okay, so this is like Kilbride? That's Kilbride. Where this, are you? I'm here. Okay. I'm going towards Brookfield Road. Okay. I'm going um, towards Brookfield so can Road. I, can I ask a question yeah. about these independent films? Yeah, of course. Because I've interviewed a bunch of filmmakers, um, not only horror, a bunch of different genres, some documentary, and... It seems like, other than the thrill of making it uh -huh. and the fun, uh -huh. it's not, it's tough to create a viable. You heard, you business heard the spooky model, laugh, right? 
You heard the spooky laugh? Yeah, I did. Okay, but that's just them, right? Uh, I guess. That's not just disembodied so, voices in the corn. No, no, no. Okay. They're not disembodied voices. So, like, do you, this is a dead end. That's right? a dead end, but this is like the... What? This is like the backside of it over here, I think. Okay. So... This way, I think, is a way? <gasps> I think we're actually lost. Like sometimes when we do these things, I want to make it creepy for people. So I'll try and create a scenario. Like a couple of years ago, we had somebody jump out and grab Mike. You had, leg. I was not okay with that. Mike, I'm talking to the audience. Give us a minute. Uh, but right now that didn't happen. I actually don't know where I am in the space. I see, oh, I see the go? other people. Oh, there's some people, but they're also not out. They're also okay, not out. let's go this way. Let's go this way. So, uh, um, yeah, like what do you do with these films? Do you put them in festivals? I mean, the whole point of all this, when you're making when you're making shorts and, and movies and, and like short films and you're trying to make features, is to make more stuff. Like that's kind of, it, it's it's a perpetual but, but motion thing. People and, see it though, and it's that yeah, it's to get people to see it, and it's to get people to like what you're doing, and then using that as calling cards to to move to the next stage, get more funding for the next project, try to get the next feature from the feature you get to a bigger feature. And next thing you from know, that, you got a, something on Netflix. You got a TV series or, an, or, or a movie. Rogers it's just television, St. John's. It's it's just about it's concentric circles. You make projects and you, you keep trying to get and bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. Oh, I'm into it. And that's kind of that is the model of it is, is just trying to get better and bigger with each project you do. Okay, so speaking of the exact opposite of concentric circles, uh -huh. which make a ton of sense, mm -hmm. how about mazes? Like I'm lost. Where do we go? Um, I mean, it's got to be this. No, see, they're lost there's... too. They're coming this way. <laughs> All right, okay, we got... Okay, okay, so like, you guys are sort of like on the tour with us, right? <laughs> you don't mind the camera for a second? Seriously though, are you lost a little bit? Oh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am 100% lost. <laughs> Come up this way? No. Oh, well, let's go. Come on. All right. We did. Oh, this is not helpful. All right. But the important thing is, guys, is this creepy and fun? Because um, that's. I think. I think. Um, I think I'm gonna find my way up here now. Just didn't remember that guy from earlier. That's yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't remember seeing that guy on the way in. So when he caught my yeah. eye in the dark a second ago, he was a little bit creepy. It was just like, oh, okay, hi, you're here. Okay, well, all right. Thanks, uh, thanks, Lester. All right. Uh, and can we do like everybody? Is, do you guys remember who you were sat next to on the bus? Yeah. yeah is everybody and here? Is that person here? <laughs> Seriously though, because I I didn't do a count. <laughs> Um, right. So, uh, to to, to uh, Linda, our station manager, I'm really sorry. I forgot to count how many people we had, but I think we it's have probably, all. It's probably the best because if you can't, if you didn't count before, then whatever number we have now is just the number we have, so we're good. Well, see, that, I left the counting up to you, and I didn't realize you were so bad at it. I, I. It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. Jane's and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was gonna stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just 
the beginning, a chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosothy.ca. I did it. I need it. The hero gave it. And I am alive. As an organ donor, you can save up to eight lives and enhance the lives of 75 others. Please go to our website. Pledge a gift of life. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back, folks. We're done at the maze. Uh, only lost a couple of people, so that's good. One of the people that we did not lose was Kelly Power, uh, another contributor, co-author of Terror Nova. Um, again, I can't get over how deadly that name is. So you are in this genre as a writer, have been for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you got involved in this project, because it's pretty cool. Uh, I was lucky to be invited to this project. Oh, oh so pardon me. Kelly is a big deal. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I am definitely not a big deal. I feel like warm body in the seat at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to do this? That's so, how I got on Rogers. <laughs> and that's that was as simple as it was. Cool. Uh, I've known Matt a little bit through working with Engine on some other stuff. Yeah. And uh, he's like, are you interested? And I said, of course, because I need something to kick me in the butt to get me writing. And Why that'll not? do it. Right. Yeah. So uh, can you give us a little teaser, kind of what your section of the story that you contributed is about? Yep, for sure. It's uh, it's uh, it's around Belle Island. OK. And it's A lot of folklore up. around Belle Island. Tons of folklore. Yeah. And I ended up doing kind of three short stories as part of one thing that was a set of transcripts that were interviews. Okay. And it ended up being three because of what you just said. I yeah. started off wanting to do just the one. And the more I thought about it and the more I was reading about it, there was just so much that was there. And it, even if it wasn't folklore, sure. the wrecks are there, the mines are there. It's just very creepy yes. in a lot of different ways. And a lot of people have been talking about, well, I mean, the idea that it, it's almost like Alcatraz the Rock. Like if you had a prison on there, or if you had like an insane asylum or something on that. I mean, no offense to all you Bell Islanders, it just make for a cool story. And I, I mean, some people even said an amusement park, so hey, an abandoned amusement park. Yeah. Kelly, I heard a rumor that you have been bragging about how yours is the best part of the entire book. Is that true? I feel like you've said that to everybody, and you're looking for a response every time, and I'm not taking that bait. Well, see, the thing is, I get to determine how this is edited, so <laughs> nobody will ever know. <laughs> that is definitely not a brag from me. I've read the book from beginning to end, yeah. and there are some really amazing, gross, terrifying stuff in there that I would recommend to anybody over my own even, so it's... So do you know what? I, I can't think of a better way to end a conversation about a book of horror stories on a Halloween special than saying amazing, gross, and terrifying. <laughs> You're welcome. Kelly Power, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the really creepy cemetery that we're going to go walk through uh, probably as soon as some B-roll of this bus and some scary stuff ends. Joe's gonna stay with everybody down around here, and I'm gonna go scare them. Okay, so, whew, creepy cemetery. This is Josh Gowdy. I'd also call him creepy if he just wasn't so gosh darn handsome. Josh, uh, another one of the co-contributors, co-authors to Terror Nova. Um, is freaky, creepy horror stuff your genre? Is that what you do? No, not at all. Not even close. I don't read horror books. I don't watch horror movies. I tried to dress spooky for tonight, and like this plum sweater was the closest thing I had. Did you do not look spooky? You I know. I'm, I am not spooky in the least. I write children's books. I write. I work in children's lit. When Mike called me up and said, "Hey, can you write me a story about a werewolf?" I said, "Oh, you want you know blood and gnashing teeth?" He said, "Yeah, that's what I want." I said, "I can't do that. That's not <laughs> what I do." I. But you did. 
no, I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I started writing, and the closest thing I could get was I wrote a sort of silly story about the idea that, you know, rising tide out in Trinity wasn't um, founded to sort of uh, save the town of Trinity. It was instead done to kind of conceal the fact that there was a werewolf living in the town and the fact that the tourism has been building has been kind of a nuisance for these people. It was when I hit send on this, I thought this is not going to be a good fit at all. But then I started reading the book with the collection when it was printed and I thought, you know, that's kind of the neat thing about working with a bunch of different authors with different backgrounds is everyone brings something a little Sorry, different. There was a spider oh, the on spiders you. Is there's there's a I'm a getting creepier. I'm getting creepier. <laughs> just one story in a horror book and now there's <laughs> spiders and great this is this is all even this so is So did you much. have fun being outside your expertise, we'll say? I have no expertise, but yeah, it was fun being outside of the, what I usually do. It's almost yeah. like flexing a different muscle, trying something new. Uh, it was fun. I, I don't know that I'm a good fit because even though I tried, I, there's a werewolf just kind of there. Yeah. He's in it. He's not doing a lot. But much like a werewolf <laughs> might get a taste for blood, perhaps you've gotten a taste for horror. Ooh, I feel like that would have been so good to end on, but I had right? nothing. <laughs> no, I think that's a perfect transition. Let's go look around, find some really, really creepy old stuff in this cemetery so to help you celebrate your Halloween night and uh, see if we can't get Josh really scared. Work? That sounds good to me. Cool. Whoa! <laughs> okay. That didn't work? No. All right. Mike, as always, I really appreciate you taking out the time to uh, bring me to places that are gross and disgusting and talk about terrifying things. Yeah, and, uh, I'm happy to do it all the time. And I'll uh, you see know. you in another 365 days, I guess. That, well, I'll see you. I'll see you at the pub. We'll see. Yeah, see me at the embassy. We'll be at. We'll be at the pub again. And again, thanks. Thanks to the embassy for big thank you for Newfoundland Embassy for giving us somewhere to hang out and interview and shoot. Big thanks to uh, Evan Bursey from Bursey's a Limousine and uh, and Buses, and also to Jeff, our driver, who's Je fantastic. Jeff Hart, who's amazing. <laughs> also to Lester's Farm Market. You're amazing. Thank you for letting us in. Uh, and to you and your crew for helping produce our Halloween special. This was so much fun. I can't thank you enough for again, like just. That we actually got on a bus and did this tonight was so cool. It's Inception. It's so weird. It's so great. It's and yeah, we just want to. We can Nova. make terror, or Terror Nova can be all kinds of things. It can be a book and a thing and another thing and a bus and it can be all the things. Amazing. Yeah. Newfoundland horror culture is uh, alive and well. So or is it dead and well? Ooh. I can't even. See, this is why he does the scary stuff. Is... See you next time. Happy Halloween. <laughs> If you have a comment about this program,